So welcome to hashtag 52 needs week eight and we are focusing on self-expression and I'm really happy to have with me Darren Saul who is a photographer who started heavily utilizing social media and podcasting to build his business. He was so amazed with the results he never really looked back and he's now an active social media marketing practitioner and podcaster who consults with organizations to help them get serious business results integrating social media and podcasting into their marketing strategy. Welcome, Darren. How are you? Oh, thank you, Angela. It's not often. Usually I'm the one doing the intro, so it's not often that I get to hear my own intro read back to me. <laughs> thank you very much. Very nice. <laughs> well, we're here to hear from you. So oh, this week this week is all about self-expression. And I would like to know um, how do we, in a business context, because I, I don't know about you, but a lot of my clients say to me, you should know me in my personal life. I'm a totally different person. Yeah. And my response to that is, I'm like, oh, really how sad what what's stopping you from self-expressing yourself so do business and self-expression go together what do you think yeah you know what's uh, while you were while you were asking that question it was actually quite interesting i was thinking to myself like there's probably two sides to that like generally we each have our work personality in a way mm -hmm. and we also have our home personality but i think maybe over the years and it's becoming more and more acceptable to start merging those two together and I think it's important for people to be themselves and be authentic and express and do what they need to do in business, um, you know, in line with what's driving them as a person. But yeah. I think, you know, there's still is something to be said about your work personality, how you show up at work and how you are at home. It can be a little different sometimes. So interesting question. Well, I, I, I consider it this way. I mean, like we all have a we expand as we are more comfortable with people. We share more of ourselves and we become more intimate with people. Yeah. And I think if you want to have a professional relationship, it's probably good to not share everything. You don't want to really go with people through everything that's going on in your life. That could be a bit overwhelming. And if you're in a leadership capacity, sharing with people what, what kind of dramas you've got at home, that could actually undermine your, your professional um well, your, your, what do we call it? Credibility, absolutely. Thank you. And, and, your, and your authority, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. I agree. Yeah, so it's really interesting how, you know, we still have to, I suppose, depending on, we have to tailor our versions of ourselves, maybe, depending on what role we play. Mm. Yeah. It's which like us, Yeah, which might be good or bad, I don't know, but that's what we're here to chat about, I suppose. I just thought maybe it's a little bit like layers of onions, you know, you yeah. peel more. But do we cry more when we share ourselves now? Let's not go into that. That's probably not the right metaphor. <laughs> maybe our audience cries. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard people say though, and I've read an article recent about recently about this, that we are starting to show up differently at work. I mean, literally. Because since lockdown, people are so used to doing business in the newscaster look, you know, like nice yeah. top and, and trackies at the bottom, yeah. that, that businesses are reconsidering modifying the dress code. Yeah, and that's really interesting, even from a social media point of view, which is something that I'm so passionate about. Yes. So many people tell me, and, I've, and I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and listen to a lot of, watch a lot of videos, and I'm hearing the same thing often these days, is that people get better response to their content when they don't do their makeup, don't do their hair, you know, don't put on that, you know, that polished Hollywood look or that yeah. polished journalist look. So do we need, still need branding photos? Do we still need to go into all of that or do we now just show up as yeah, we are? I think the answer is really consistency. As long as you're, you, you could, you've got to send the right messages to your customers or to your audience. As long as they can understand your message and where you're coming from, and you're consistent in how you portray it in a way, then I suppose you could do anything. But the key is how you, you have to be consistent and people have to know what you're about. If they don't know what you're about and they're confused, then it doesn't really work from a branding point of view because it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I was just thinking, I mean, I, I, I met this woman once who showed up and um, she was very girly you know, like, like lots of makeup and look, yeah. there's nothing wrong. I mean, I'm, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but she had this whole girly thing going with lots of flowery dresses and high heels yeah. and all of that. But when she opened her mouth, <laughs> it was a totally different story. Oh, no, I mean, no. her self-expression had a bandwidth that was very unexpected. <laughs> he See, was, he, he was tough yeah. as nails. Yeah. And that's kind of like subconscious or subliminal 
that's kind of going against, you know, what you'd expect or, or a brand in a way. But, you know, each to their own. I suppose that comes back to this um, topic as well. If that's who she really was, you know, the way she spoke was one way, but the way she wanted to dress was another, then who are we to, to argue? Absolutely. I mean, again, it's self-expression. It's yeah. a how, how do, do I see myself? Now, women have many more opportunities to do that, which is why I thought yes. this was an example. Men, not so much. I mean, no, you can't I mean, really, that's why I mean, I always say I love it when a man shows up. I, I had a classmate who used to wear uh, mascara and eyeshadow. He looked wow. stunning, you yeah. know, <laughs> but people were going, you really shouldn't be doing that. And what will people think? And he was like, I don't care. Yep. But we can wear dresses, we can wear shirts, we uh, skirts, we can do all of that. A man's accessorizing is very limited. I agree, I agree. And I'm so happy that you don't have to just wear suits anymore. Like the old days when I was going to work it was always suit and tie and we all look the same. The same navy suit, the same dark grey suit, white shirts, tie. Like we're so boring, like a bunch well, of robots. You did have a choice between a red tie and a blue tie and a green right. tie, right? <laughs> if you right. really went out, you did it one with a paisley pattern. And if you were completely outside of norms, you would have one with cartoon characters. Yeah. And if you're really a rebel, you'd stop wearing ties altogether and open up one button. Then you're yeah. like, whoa, what happened here? Yes. <laughs> you know, but then I'm so much happier these days when I can dress according to my personality and, you know, accessorize yeah. according to my personality. I, I'm not a corporate, you know, um, dress that type of dress is not really for me. Okay. So we've talked about self-expression face to face and being in person. Okay. And you have mentioned social media. Yeah. Um, so do, when people self express, and I, I use the word in quotes now, when people self express on social media, there's, there's often not a lot left of the real person. It's often a facade, often a facade, right? Yeah. I mean, again, it's a trick because, you know, are we, when we say, we're, or when, when you're saying we are really are self-expressing, we're not putting on a show, we're really mm. being ourselves, then true, then we're being totally authentic. And that's a good thing, I think. People, people as, I, as I mentioned before, a lot of people mention to me that they get so much better engagement with their content, whether it's video, audio, written, when they're just being themselves. Mm -hmm. So I suppose if we can continue to be authentic and be consistent with who we are, um, it will build a, a, a more true audience and a more loyal audience. And as well, it'll allow us to enjoy what we do. Because if we're not being authentic and we're, we're trying to always fit it ourselves into a mold, yeah. you know, how long can we really last doing that, doing that thing? Yeah, without turning ourselves into a pretzel yeah. and really well, not knowing who we are. crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, you know, it's a long game. Everything we're doing, especially nowadays with content creation and digital content creation and marketing, it's a long game and we have to be able to be ourselves so we can be in the game for long enough, you know? Absolutely. But we have to show up more and more. Yeah. I mean, I can, did, did we have that conversation where we talked about how much more you actually have to show up on Facebook and on social media in general in order to be remembered and recognized? I don't think we did, but I totally agree with you. I think these days there is so much noise, especially after the last year mm. and moving into this year, there is so much noise or activity on social more than ever before. We really have to be better um, in, our, in the way we express and the way we execute on social media to really stand out. It's just as simple as that. So is self-expression flooding your, your, your feed with, um, I went to the gym, I've had just had lunch, here's a photo, I've had, um, I've had cocktails with this person, and by the way, I've just had this deep and meaningful thought, and here is a quote. Is that really necessary? Yeah, I hear you. And I, when I, the way that I think about it is, you still have to always try to give your audience what they need, what can help them. You know, mm -hmm. we have to think of ourselves as educators, all, our, all us marketers these days, we're educators of our audience and our tribe. If we can educate and give them information that will help them, that will in turn build brand for us. So agree. So you have to be tailored a little bit in your, your content. Mm. If I just put content out every day that takes a picture of me having a coffee or having lunch or you know, in my car, you know, what, what really am I, what value am I really giving or adding? to my audience, you know, other than they're not, yeah. you know, you could buy a coffee here, you can buy, this guy just drinks coffee. Yeah. You know, what else am I actually giving them? But if I, I don't mind doing that a little bit, but I think you still have to be very careful and very conscious to 80% of the time, at least give people 
value people give people what's important to them because mm -hmm. that in turn will build your awareness and build the trust in you yeah it's really important i think that's such an important point and you don't see that at all you don't see that often enough on social you know because people are still trying to get their head around it all and trying mm -hmm. to understand their strategy and work out what they should be doing but if i can say one thing it's 80 percent of the time give people what they need and 20 percent of the time do some promotion do some you know some fun stuff absolutely but the ratio has got to be right yeah. yeah so it's really important so what i'm hearing is be regular be consistent yep. add value and be authentic forget the makeup and for guys yep. what does that mean show up in sweaty pants i mean yeah. i just i just yeah. saw somebody coming out of the gym <laughs> he didn't look like he came out of the gym but that's okay yeah. um but those are the pictures we want to see we want to see people in in their life situations definitely because i have to say the the article he wrote with it was really great okay but, uh, what, do you remember what it was about yes absolutely and it will stick good good yeah absolutely because I, I agree like you do have to be as authentic as you can and if you really do have something to say after you've walked out of the gym and it's relevant to the environment perfect time to actually post it up and do whatever you have to do that's when yeah. you should do it yeah but if you if you don't really need to do it then and you might be better off with your branding in line with your branding do it doing it another way then you have to think about that as well mm -hmm. so it's yeah. more strategy than you know being inauthentic you still have to be authentic with regards with you know, with respect to whatever we do but i suppose yeah. we have to think about why we're doing it absolutely it's got to be a strategy behind what we do otherwise it's just everything's just spray and pray <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old term we used to use. I can't even remember where, in what context, but it was spray and pray. <laughs> so basically it is self-expression, please not for self-expression say, uh, sake, but for the sake of somebody who wants to get some value out of it. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay. There's nothing wrong with being authentic and being true to yourself, but also trying to give someone else, give your audience some value give them something that they can learn mm. and that will in turn build more credibility and awareness and trust and potentially lead to business for you that's what we're good. doing this for in the first place good wonderful thank you so much darren i know oh, we can talk goodness. about this for a few more hours and i'm sure we will at some point <laughs> <laughs> we definitely could but i really appreciate coming on the show and you know thank you so much for all your efforts thank you and thank everybody for watching i hope this was interesting and useful and i'll see you next week